National Championship. The Florida Gators have won the Southeastern Conference Championship. Gator Zone is presented by Wells Fargo. Together, we'll go far. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Gator Zone alongside Megan Parler, Jeff Cardozo with you, and we are excited to be in front of the newly renovated Katie Seashell Presley Softball Stadium, part of over $150 million in renovations they are doing to the athletic facilities. Of course, softball, baseball is right across the street over there. Football is going to get a facelift, and this softball team is uh, certainly loving what it's seeing, and we're loving this springtime because athletes all over the place doing some great things, including uh, ho hum, another national title for Mouse Holloway. So they finish up the indoor with a national title, but no rest for the weary, right? Yeah, now it's outdoor season, but looking back at that indoor run, AJ McFarlane in his fifth year as a Gator from DeLand, always wanted to be a Gator. He's living out his dreams, winning national championships <laughs> every year, and he is the school record holder in the weight throw. So here's JT with AJ's remarkable story. Many of the athletes at the University of Florida were highly touted high school recruits. Senior track and field thrower AJ McFarland has a much different story. Entering his senior year at Father Lopez Catholic High School, McFarland called Florida's track and field offices just to see if there were any walk-on openings, even though he didn't meet the unofficial qualifying standards. An hour later, Thoreau's coach Steve Lemke called back, and following a visit shortly thereafter, McFarland became a Gator. I didn't throw competitively until I was a sophomore in high school and then my sophomore year finished and I, I really enjoyed it. I loved to throw the discus. I was like, that was a lot of fun. Coach Lemke called me and that was the first time we talked and starstruck isn't the right word, but uh, just completely overwhelmed like Florida called me, no way. This sort of thing isn't exactly new for the Gators. Thrower Jeremy Poston, who later became a multi-time All-American and SEC champion, sent a video to Coach Lemke with hopes of being recruited. You know, we wanted to try to develop a couple more new people, but a little taller. Jeremy was like six feet tall, and AJ six foot five. So it was, you know, a bigger version. See how it goes, and it's it's worked out. Although McFarland made it onto the roster, he still had doubts about his own ability. With some help from his parents, he finally started to see the great potential that he had. I did a lot of questioning of myself growing, at least through high school, being like, you know, I don't know if I'm going to get to that level, but it would be amazing to be on that level. I I, I knew my work ethic coming in. Uh, I had no clue what my athletic potential was in track and field. I had no idea because I, I had talked to my parents about it too. I was just like, kind of like before I came, I was like, why? They just said, you got you to gotta believe. You got to believe in yourself. You got to believe in the man upstairs. You got to believe in, in, in Coach Lemke and Coach Holloway, and you just got to go train. McFarland would go on to earn All-American distinctions in the weight and hammer throws, in addition to winning an SEC championship and shattering the weight throw school record. Along with his on-the-field accolades, McFarland would also enjoy another role in the team, as a leader. But I think it's always important to have leadership, and more importantly, good leadership. And AJ is that guy. He shows up every day. He works hard, so he doesn't just lead with his mouth. He leads by example. He he is the ultimate team player. He knows what everyone's doing. Um, you know how their training is going, how they're competing, and, and you know talks to everybody. You know supports everyone, encourages everybody, and. And it's not just when he's doing well, he does that all the time. Even with the expanded role, McFarland still remains humble. I try not to put myself on a different level. I do try to, in that role, I try to just, just be another track athlete here. Like, we're all the same. We're all college students trying to get a degree and be the best athlete that we can be. Though his journey to become a Gator was quite unorthodox, McFarland will leave a legacy that goes beyond his remarkable success. I'm not sure AJ knew what a hammer in a way was before he stepped on this campus, but he came in and he embraced it and he's done a phenomenal job of not just growing as an athlete, but more importantly growing as a person. And as you talked about, me becoming a leader on the team and doing, doing great things, I think that LJ's legacy left here would not just be an All-American athlete, but an All-American person. He just, wherever he is, you know, with, whether it's an early Saturday morning practice or, you know, when it's hot and miserable out, he just lifts the group up, but, you know, he's enthusiastic. Um, he gets, gets things, you know, at the level that we needed to get to, to to get things done, and it'll be tough to replace that. I might not be the best guy, I might not have scored the most points at Nationals or something like that, but I, I have a lot of passion, I have a lot of passion for the uniform, and I definitely have, uh, I take a lot of pride in our logo, 
and what comes with that and what Gator Track and Field is. AJ McFarland is a shining example of what Florida Track and Field is all about. For Gator Zone, I'm JT Santos. Well, thank you so much, JT. And I know Jeff and I will look forward to tracking how track does <laughs> in the outdoor seasons. And I'm sure hopefully bringing back another national championship. And Jeff, we got to get to our first break. I know you're itching to get into the new stadium. So should we head in? Yeah, I'm ready to uh, jump the fence or leave and bust down the gates. Whatever we got to do, we'll take you inside when we come back. Gator Zone is brought to you by Wells Fargo. Together, we'll go far and by Gatorade, win from within. Well, in Blake Reese's senior year, he's made turning double plays look pretty nice. Ooh, sweet, nice toss, and uh, he has been phenomenal at the plate as well. Blake Reese, 19 doubles last year as a junior. That led the team and doing some great things. Now as a senior captain for Kevin O'Sullivan. This past offseason, Blake Reese joined an elite list, being named a team captain by head coach Kevin O'Sullivan. Blake and fellow senior Nelson Maldonado became the second and third ever Gators under O'Sullivan to wear the captain C on their jerseys. Being named a captain seems fitting for the infielder from Tallahassee who has had an affinity for baseball his entire life and always taken it seriously. I just remember it consuming me, you know, entirely. It was, it was my entire life and I was always obsessed with it. Um, my dad always makes fun of me because he said he was amazed at how serious I always took it, you know what I mean? So I'd be out there playing with all these other kids, but I would get mad if they weren't taking it seriously and stuff like that. It was it was just an extreme passion from a, from a young age. Blake's path to UF wasn't always easy to see. So I was originally committed to USF. Uh, Florida State recruited me, but they never offered me. Um, and there was a coaching change at USF uh, prior to my senior year, and I had a good summer. and. Uh, Brad and Sully and a couple, you know, Craig, they, they came and saw me and ended up offering me and it was a pretty easy switch, a chance to play in the SEC. You know, at that point in time, Florida was already one of the best programs, if not the best in the entire country. Um, they run down all the numbers of big leaguers they produced and the wins. It's, it's pretty incredible. So it, it wasn't a hard decision to, to want to be a part of that. Since arriving on Florida's campus and joining the baseball team, Blake has had his share of ups and downs. It's been a long road uh, my, when I think about my career here. And freshman year was tough. I think I had seven at bats. Um, sophomore year, I think I had 18 starts. So I, I, I've kind of been at the bottom, and, and I know what it feels like. Um, but I'm happy that I stuck it out. And it's been you know, a good feeling for me to stick it out, you know, no matter how hard it was, because um, I, I just wanted a chance to play here. This season, Blake has seen some reduced playing time from his junior year. But when you talk to Blake's teammates, it's not hard to see the effect he has on the team, even if he isn't on the field. I'm going to go ahead and say he's one of the most mentally tough kids I've, I've probably ever met in my life. And, you know, he's really stuck through it. And, you know, everything really, everything hasn't always gone his way, but he's always found a way just to stick through it and, you know, keep persevering. And, you know, he's been an awesome teammate. He's been an awesome friend to me, and you know he's he's helped me a whole lot while I've been here um, at UF, and you know I'm I'm really grateful for him as a teammate. I think it's a huge part of our team, even if he goes 0 for 4 or 4 for 4. I think just his presence on the field makes our team what it is. I mean, he's gone through a lot. He has a lot of experience on and off the field, and I think him being here for as long as he has been is really a positive thing for our team. Blake's like our, our dad almost. I mean, Blake keeps us in, under control on things and uh, having him in the field is really helpful just because when I'm doing something or when I'm throwing, I can always look back to Blake to have like a positive attitude or get me through like a, a rough inning or a rough couple pitches and get my mind back at ease. And I think he's really relaxed out there and I think that helps us as a team to calm down and we know Blake's gonna have our back. When his time at Florida has come to an end, Blake has a couple ways he'd like to be remembered. I suppose something along the lines of tough or uh, resilient. Um, I just want to be known as a hard worker that, you know, stuck it out and, you know, did everything he could to, to help his program. For Gator Zone, I'm Gareth Gutierrez. All right, Gareth, thank you. Great stuff on Blake Reese and great that he became a Gator because you know where he's from? Where? Tallahassee. Oh. 
made a, a good decision to come be a part of the University of Florida. We got to get through our next break here on Gator Zone, but after the break, our own talented camera woman today, Shelby Granath, will have two more features for you right after this. Gator Zone is brought to you by Wells Fargo. Together, we'll go far. And by Gatorade, win from within. Hey everyone, Jeff and I made our way into the home dugout for Florida Gators and one of my favorite logos, Script Gators, hanging out on the back of the wall. And we're gonna talk a little gymnastics here. In her junior year, Sierra Alexander has made her return back to the vault lineup because last year she tore her Achilles. So, Jeff, please be careful up there. Yep, don't wanna tear my Achilles, but I'm just showing off my beam skills. See, I'm doing, I'm hanging on to the fence here, but I'm making it work and really good to have Sierra back in the lineup. And she helped the team win the SEC regular season title. Here's Shelby with more. It's always uh, a time where my stomach just turns and flips over uh, thinking about uh, that day. The date was January 31st, 2018, and the Gators were wrapping up one final practice before heading to Auburn for an away meet. Jenny told me if I could do a backup pass uh, for my double lay, I would be in for floor and it'd be like my first time doing floor ever for UF, so I was like beyond ecstatic. I was like, okay, one more pass, one more double tuck, and I'm, I'm in on floor, easy. When Sierra punched for her final pass, she felt a pop. And then I hit the floor and I was like, I hope that like I broke my ankle, I hope I shattered my heel in a million pieces because like this can't be my Achilles, like I just can't have it be my Achilles. Fear turned into reality for Alexander when her torn Achilles was confirmed. After that, like I heard like nothing, like Jenny was talking to me and our old trainer Kelly, she was talking to me and I just, I kind of tuned it out. I didn't hear anything. I was just like very, very sad. Those are the days that I don't like to remember. Those are days that I never forget. It's a constant reminder of growth and the trials and tribulations that uh, these athletes go through. To be so close to achieving my goal of doing floor for you know the university and just getting right there and then having it all taken away was just very hard. Sierra was able to push through the physical discomfort but it was the mental and emotional pain that almost wore her down. Not gonna lie, uh, it was rough, it was really rough. She wanted to give up and be done with the sport and it was hard for her to cope and understand that yes, it's possible to come back from something like that. But yet after a few discussions and a little bit of time, uh, she did. She turned that mindset around. After I talked with my family and my coaches and, you know, just got encouraging a little messages from my team and stuff, I knew that, like, I didn't want to be done. And I knew that, like, I was not going to let a torn Achilles be the reason I stopped gymnastics. Like, I wanted to stop on my own terms. So if I tore my Achilles and came back and then didn't want to do gym, then yeah, I'd be done. But I didn't want an injury to be what stopped me. Just 10 days after her surgery, the stitches were removed and Sierra immediately got to work. She knew if she wanted to compete in orange and blue again, she needed to be committed to the recovery process, which she obviously was, because Alexander was back in the vault lineup for the 2019 season opener, just 11 months after she tore her Achilles tendon. Just amazing, just to think about where I was versus where I am now. I didn't think I would be vaulting and in competition so quickly after, but I kind of, I felt very, very, very good about myself because I was able to do that. It's always amazing to see, you know, how far these athletes come from injuries and knowing how tough she took it and how she wanted to give up. To witness how good she still can be was a great sight to see. The smile on her face, it's undeniable. Really, you could just you could just tell that the pain, the time commitment, the effort, the energy, everything, it was it was all worth it. It's just amazing to be with a group of girls who are so great and amazing at gymnastics and have done so many things, you know, for the country, for gym. And just to be a part of this is just crazy and for me to be a walk-on and be in lineup is amazing but then for me to tear my Achilles come back and you know still be an option and still be useful for the team is, I can't explain it. Her freshman year she was a walk-on and her sophomore year she tore her Achilles but now in her junior season Sierra Alexander is a scholarship athlete who is consistently vaulting for the Gators. For Gator Zone, I'm Shelby Granath.
All right, Shelby, great stuff. And Shelby's been busy because she did our next story as well. And I'm just glad I didn't dive on into the yeah. dugout. But our next story is about a guy that dives into the pool all the time and he's doing some good things. Yeah, Jeff, and he comes from New York, which I feel like is pretty unique for sure. a swim, swim and dive athlete. But Nick Lydon came all the way from New York freshman year. But right before he got here, health scare. So again, had to overcome something for his first year as a Gator. Like a majority of divers, freshman Nick Lydon started in the gymnastics facility before he switched over to the water. It wasn't really for me. I just like wanted to bounce on the trampoline. It, like I didn't really want to do the gymnastics. Um, so my dad asked the instructor there, like, what should I do? And she said, you should try diving. Even though he just started diving a little over 10 years ago, Lydon still has an impressive resume. He's a high school record holder a three-time state finalist, a state champion, and a six-time USA national qualifier. Lydon visited a number of schools, but when he took a trip to Gainesville, it was a done deal. I never really believed people when they said like, oh, you'll know when it's the place for you and like everything will be perfect. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay, sure. But then I got here and I was like, I loved the Hawkins Center and then like Brian and the pool and everything. So it's like everything kind of fell into place. Nick was looking forward to a great summer of competitions and starting his freshman year in the fall. But after a Labor Day workout last May, his plans changed. I did a workout and I got rhabdomyolysis from it. So pretty much I worked out too hard and the muscle cells burst in my arms. The protein and everything and the muscle that's been built up like leaked out into my bloodstream and like my kidneys couldn't handle it, so they were going to shut down and potentially fail if I didn't get medical treatment. Leiden spent a week in the hospital, and even though he knew he'd recover from rhabdo, he also understood it would be a long road. Not an easy diagnosis for a young athlete about to start his collegiate career. Whenever I was just like stressed out or anything, I would just go and do a workout or I would go dive and like not being able to do that, that being taken away, taken away from me, it was just, it was really hard to get through because it's like, it was kind of like a coping mechanism for me. Come fall, Leiden moved to Gainesville from New York, began training at a brand new level and started his college classes. Not an easy transition for anyone let alone someone still recovering from a very serious injury. It started out rough. It was really tough. I hadn't done like my hard dives or anything like that in a while and we kind of got thrown into some higher level training for sure and it, it was a step up already from the training I was doing before. It was difficult. I was sore every day, struggling to make it through practices and like dealing with like new overuse injuries and stuff like that. It set us back. I think, um, I think it set us back a few months, really. Just to know that he was all right, that was the most important thing, you know? He was really down about it, his spirits were down. So it was just a matter of getting his confidence back, getting his health back, uh, and, and picking up where he left off. So it took a couple months to get him there, but with his work ethic, he wasn't gonna give up, he wasn't gonna let them, that stop him. When it comes to diving, Leiden has big dreams and aspirations and Coach Galuli knows what Nick needs to do to achieve those goals. He will be able to take me uh, way further than I probably ever even think I can do now. Um, he sees everything that I don't and can push me there. He's kind of doesn't have any limits on the dives he's going to be able to perform because he's strong and he's fast. Some people have a lot of slow twitch muscles and they're going to be kind of limited on those the three and a halves and, and things that we're doing. Difficulties going up and up in the sport. Nick's going to be able to do those dives. So his speed, his strength, or his, uh, his strengths on the board physically, like I said, his, his attitude is tremendous too. Leiden had a minor setback before he started college. But now, as a Gator, he's ready to make a major comeback. For Gator Zone, I'm Shelby Grinnell. All right, Jeff, so we need to thank Shelby once more for all of her incredible stories, but we got to get to our last break here on Gator Zone. I've been holding on to this ball for way too long. We're going to put it to use and see if we can figure out something to do for top plays. I'm a big Alex Voss fan, okay. so regardless of where she's playing in the outfield, just channel your inner Alex Voss. 
Get your ups ready, and let's see if you can rob a home run. <laughs> Brought it back, and that padding is pretty nice, and obviously a nice to go nine times to Oklahoma City. So a top play there. Here's some more from the student athletes. Today's top plays are brought to you by Nike. Recent years, numbers for Smith on the season. Hits this one high and deep to left, and the Gators have their first lead of this series. A bomb off the bat of Brady Smith. His second home run, eighth RBI, one nothing Gators. Toward left center, and what a catch. Fabian to his right. Full extension to retire Ray. Nicely done. Team who needs to find their identity. Roberts pounds this deep towards left field. Forget about it. Off the roof of the bullpen and left. Jordan Roberts, her fourth home run of the year. The Gators have a 1 0 lead. Oh, I hope I play well against them. This is drilled in the air towards left center field with carry towards the wall. It's gone. Bangs off the scoreboard for Kendall Lindemann, who is now homered in five of the last seven games. And for Lindemann, her seventh long ball of the year, the Gators have a 6 0 lead. Perfectly. Lindemann drives this deep towards left field, all the way towards the Gator bullpen. She's over it again. Kendall Lindemann, the power stroke on display. And the Gators continue to pad their lead. 3 1 is power towards right center field, back towards the wall. She's done it again. Kendall Lindemann goes yard for a fourth straight game. And the Gators take a 3 0 lead. Lindemann, has she done it again? Deep towards left field, and that is gone. A home run for Kendall Lindemann. Warren trying to make the catch on a leap, but Lindemann has done it again back-to-back -back days with multiple home runs. Her 10th of the year. Indicators now lead 9-3. Can you believe it? So the spring produces so many great phenomenal plays, great student athletes here, and great times because if you look at the polls, when they come out, and you always see that on social media, it is first, second, third, third, fourth. It's like, oh my goodness, there are uh, Gators all over the polls everywhere. Fun time of year. I thought you were going to do your best oh my, Jeff, but you just know oh my goodness. But speaking of social media, as always, you can follow your Gators on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat all season long. That's going to do it. Hope you get out here to enjoy KDC Show Presley Softball Stadium. It is absolutely phenomenal, and so was our camera work today. How about uh, Shelby Grinnap? Did fantastic stuff. She is my partner, Megan Parler, and I'm Jeff Cardozo. We'll see you guys next time.